God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Professional Truckers Association Church. I do count it a privilege each week to stand before you and minister the Word of God. I ask that you pray for me daily, that God will word my mouth and give me the strength to carry on. I want you to know that I love Jesus with all my heart, and I love you, my brothers and sisters. Although this is uh, uh, the Professional Truckers Association Church, I do thank God that we're reaching out to more of the community and truck drivers. We focus and gear our, our lessons and, and gear this ministry toward uh, making it available to truck drivers, but in doing so, many other people are watching. You have to understand a church, uh, uh, anyone that wants to can join any church they, uh, it is. Because number one, every church should belong to Jesus Christ. Uh, and if you're in the body of Christ, wherever you fit in, you should be welcomed. And, and we welcome all of our brothers and sisters, whether you drive a big rig uh, or, or whether you uh, are uh, from other branches of life, we do thank God we have some that are in military that have voiced their 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 life for this ministry or retired military. I thank God for you today. This ministry is for you. It's for everyone who will listen. And I want you to know I'm here for you as your pastor. If you get in touch with me, I guarantee you I will respond. I will give contact information at the end of this service. If you want to know how to accept Jesus as, a, as your personal Savior, I will lead you personally to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Just get, get in touch with me and we will pray with you and, and, and give you instructions. That if you get in touch with, uh, with me and this ministry, we will send you literature that will help you in your spiritual walk and do all that we can to be a blessing to you in the body of Christ. Well, today we're going to study, we're going to, uh, after we have prayed, we're going to read three verses of scripture in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. We'll read verse 11, 12, and 13 uh, and lay a foundation for this sermon today. Well, you got to understand, God is so real and he wants us to know who he is and, and how he is. Uh, and many times he, he allows us to know why he does certain things. You got to understand, God is a big God and Many times he does miraculous things, but there's a reason why he does it. Well, before we go into scripture, let's say a word of prayer. Let's ask God to invoke his presence upon this service and everything we do in this ministry. I ask that you pray with me if it, if it is expedient for you to do so. As we bow our heads, Father God, I just want to thank you for another day. Thank you because you are so good to us. You have blessed us, Lord, to, to arise and, and go through our daily tasks. Will you let us go through the week without hurt, harm, and danger? Thank you so much for that, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for our life, our, very, our health, and our very strength. Uh, thank you for the automobiles we drive. Thank you for the clothes we wear, the houses that we live in. We thank you for all things. Uh, God, we just want you to know that we love you and we praise and magnify your name. I'm asking you, Lord, to bless every truck driver that drives up and down these highways. Be a strength to them, Lord. Keep them alert as they drive over the highways and, and be with them. Don't let them have accidents and get them back to their families safely. Uh, in the name of Jesus, and even those that are not truck, truck drivers that, that's a part of this ministry, I want you to bless them and keep them. Uh, be a shield around them and, and let them know that I love them as their pastor and you love them and love, uh, love all of us as uh, uh, our God. Uh, please bless us and we will give your name the praise for all things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, the said scripture today, the third chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, let's read verse 11, 12, and 13. Uh, uh, yet going along with uh, the subject matter that we've been teaching on for uh, uh, some few weeks now, we're talking about the Holy Ghost and how it is and how it operates. Uh, well, you got to understand God works miracles. Uh, many things happen uh, uh, in the day that we live. It happened in yesteryears and the Apostles' days, but they didn't happen just for nothing. Uh, when God worked miracles, that was a foundation to tell people about Jesus. Same way in the day that 
we live. Uh, when God does something spectacular, uh, that's our foundation to let a dying world know that Jesus is real, uh, that Jesus yet works miracles. Uh, he is alive and he's well. Uh, you guys got to understand, so many people got him in their mind as, number one, um, many of them have him still as a little infant child uh, and uh, not as that grown, that, that the one who grew up to be a man uh, uh, that that uh, that walked around and and the power of God was him. Uh, you gotta understand. You gotta understand. Jesus is no longer there in the manger. Thank God for uh, his birth, uh, and we we celebrate that every year, the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But you gotta understand. We gotta take him further than that, and not only some of them take him all the way to the cross and and, and him dying on the cross and they believe that part of him but yet you got to also believe in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ you have to believe that he's yet alive and many times he will reveal himself and work a miracle for us to know that he is when he does work a miracle that's our foundation to let the world know that this is a this is Jesus this is the one that 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 uh, that, that shed his blood there on Calvary for us. And let's go, out, go to our scripture today, and we're going to talk about this chapter, but let me condense things if I possibly can. In verse 11, uh, uh, And as the lame man who was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that was called Solomon's, greatly wondering. Uh, and when Peter saw it, he answered the people, uh, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? So, or why look ye so earnestly on us, uh, as though by our own power or holiness uh, we had made this man walk? And that's one thing I admire about Peter. Uh, instead of him taking the credit for himself and trying to build his own fan club, uh, he stopped the people and let them know, say, look, uh, this is not us doing this. Uh, this this is not our work. Or this is not by our holiness. Or why do you gaze at us like you gaze? And shall I read that again? And when Peter saw it, he answered the people, uh, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power of holiness uh, we made, uh, we had made this man to walk? He asked them, Why are you looking at us? Uh, we're not the ones in, that did it. Now let's read verse 13. Uh, the God of Abraham and of Isaac uh, and of Jacob, uh, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son Jesus, uh, whom you delivered up uh, and denied in the presence of Pilate uh, when he was uh, determined to let him go. Uh, so get this picture now. Uh, this was a perfect time for Peter to let the world know, uh, let everyone listening know uh, about Jesus. Uh, and when spectacular things happen in our life and when Jesus does something to but out of the ordinary uh, or works a miracle in our life, that's the perfect time for us to tell people uh, that this is Jesus. Uh, this is not us and this is not our doing, uh, but it's the working and miracle working power of our Lord. Uh, and this is what Peter did. He, t he, he took this foundation. And to begin to tell them uh, about this Jesus, in other words, you got to understand who he was dealing with. Uh, he was dealing with the Jews who had rejected our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. And he, he made mention that this is the one that, that Pilate was willing to release. And, and if, as we read further, if we read this entire chapter, Peter just laid it out there for him. Uh, uh, but you denied the Holy One and the just and desired uh, a murderer uh, to be granted unto you. Uh, well, those of you that know the gospel, the, the people wanted Barabbas to be, be released uh, and let Jesus be crucified. Uh, well, Jesus went right on, uh, Peter went right on down the line and began to tell them uh, everything that they would done. Yes, it pricked many of them's heart, and you got to understand that anytime you tell people the truth, uh, uh, you, if you tell them the truth about themselves, everybody's not going to like it. Uh, some of them will grieve, and uh, uh, some of them will hurt, but some of them it will bring the, them to repentance. Uh, so Peter uh, stood up and began to tell people about Jesus. Uh, you got to understand, and we ought to have that mentality when Jesus works 
great wonders in our life, when he does uh, miraculous things, uh, or when the Holy Ghost moves on us and does things out of the ordinary, uh, you have to understand that's our chance to testify and tell the world uh, about our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, well, what had happened? you got to understand, what had happened so miraculous that got the people's attention? Uh, well, uh, you got to get the picture now. Now, Peter and John went up together uh, into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his birth was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask an alm of them that entered into the temple. Well, get that picture. This man, you got to understand, people that are uh, paraplegic or, or, or sick or blind or something of that nature, they would make their way to uh, a certain part uh, where there's heavy traffic, uh, and they would ask alm. Many of them had a cup or had some type of, type of container. Uh, they would ask alms of people or ask uh, for money, <coughs> in other words, so that they could live. Uh, you got to understand, in the, in the days of old, they didn't have disabilities and, and they didn't get uh, 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 SSI checks and all these type of things. So the, in order for them to live, many of them, if they couldn't walk, if they were lame or incapacitated, uh, they would make their way to a high traffic area and ask alms of people or ask for donations from people so they can live. Uh, this particular man was there asking alms, uh, you know, as he did every day. Uh, well, uh, uh, then Peter looked at him. He fastened his eyes upon him with John uh, and said, look on us. Ask the, the, ask the paraplegic man to look on us. Uh, and he, he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from from them. Uh, he was waiting on a donation, uh, waiting on a piece of money. Uh, then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, rise up and walk. Uh, and how powerful is that name? Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Uh, and you have to understand we walk in that authority as well. Uh, we can speak things in the name of Jesus and they will happen. Uh, why? Because the power of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, well, get that picture. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Uh, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Uh, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. This was a man who had to, who had to be laid there and could not walk, but yet uh, I was asking alms. Uh, and you have to understand, anytime you go to the same spot every day, you become to be known by everybody that would pass through that way. They know who you are. Well, you got to understand, they know the condition that you're in, and they knew the condition this man was in, but then something happened. He received strength, and he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered into, uh, entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. Can you imagine the those people that know this man was laying there every day, now they see him walking and leaping and praising God. Don't you know I would be praising God too? Anytime God does anything for me, I start praising him. I lift his name up in the beauty of holiness. I am not ashamed of what I have. When Jesus does something for me, I will praise him regardless to wherever I'm at. I'm just waiting on God to do even greater things. So I I can praise him a little bit louder. Don't fool yourself. I am not ashamed. I'll praise God anywhere, in any circumstances, whenever he does anything for me, above and beyond anything that he has to do. you got to understand that he don't have to do anything. Therefore, I praise him every day, and I will praise him in any platform. Well, this man, because God had healed him, he was leaping and walking and running and praising, praising God. Can you imagine he got the temple, uh, the attention of all those people that walked in the gate, uh, got the attention of all those people that uh, that were uh, regular traffickers in that area? Why? Because they saw this man. They knew who he was. Many of them had gave him alms at one time or another, gave him them a piece of money, gave him a piece of money for his living at one time or another. And here they find him up praising God, uh, jumping and leaping uh, and praising the true and the living God. Uh, now, now, uh, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. 
and they they knew that uh, it was he who sat for alms uh, at the beautiful gate of the temple, uh, and they were filled with wonder and amazement uh, at that which uh, at that which had happened unto him. Uh, and then that's where we find uh, he was there hugging Peter and and hugging John. You gotta understand, I'd be hugging everybody uh, if God would let me walk again. Uh, if God would, uh, I was lame, and then God let me walk again. Uh, I'd be hugging everybody. I would be leaping. I'd be praising God just like this man. And the people, you got to understand, uh, and this is where we begin our reading, uh, the people were amazed and they were in wonderment about what is happening. And you got to get that understanding now. Uh, when the Holy Ghost does so something spectacular, uh, or when the power of God moves uh, and touches and heals, and deliver that it's not just for nothing that it's not a, a sideshow many times we want to reduce our God down to some type of a Ringland Barnum and Bailey circus you got to understand this thing is for real that we can't bring it down to some kind of level of a, some kind of sideshow you got to understand that God is so real that, and that's our time to really tell people about Jesus that, not about us and, and not about you got to understand now, I might might get on somebody's nerves, but I really don't care. Uh, it's not the time to tell people that, you know, what kind of car I drive, or, or how large a house I live in. It's all right for you to have any kind of car you want to drive. I am not mad at you at all. Uh, but our foundation is to tell people about Jesus. Uh, when Jesus does something uh, out of the ordinary, uh, or works a miracle for us, uh, when Jesus does something so spectacular, that people are in amazement about it, uh, or they're standing in awe about it. Uh, you got to understand, it's not <coughs> it's not no big thing to drive a Rolls Royce, babies. Uh, the dope addicts, I mean drug addicts, uh, uh, drug dealers can do that. You got to get, get it now. Uh, people that do the wrong thing can drive Rolls Royces. Uh, there's a whole lot of people that got their money illegally drive Rolls Royces. Uh, so you can't put no, uh, put no power on people driving Rolls Royces. If you, anybody got enough offerings from somebody, they can drive a Rolls Royce. But when the power of God come in uh, and touches someone uh, and does something spectacular for someone, uh, something that you cannot explain, uh, something that money can't buy, uh, this man was lame from birth, uh, and God uh, healed him. Uh, he received strength in his in his in his uh, in his ankles and his feet, and began to walk and leap. And praising and praise God. This was spectacular. This was out of the ordinary. You got to understand, we need to, a lot of time take dollars and cents off of stuff and look for the real power of God. You, many times, you got to understand uh, the money can come in through carnal means, money can come in through deception, but the power of God can't be mistaken. The power of the Holy Ghost can't be be mistaken uh, when the power of the Holy Ghost comes in or when Jesus shows himself uh, and heals someone like he did this man. Peter said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, get that picture, uh, get up from there, uh, rise up and walk, you got to get that now. Uh, Jesus, uh, he does things out of the ordinary uh, and we need that gift back in our church. We need the power of the Holy Ghost back in our churches and we need to separate it from dollars and cents. Dollars and cents can come in through wrong means, but the power of the Holy Ghost, when it operates, can't nobody do nothing but say this is the power of God. And Peter, in the people's amazement, he found the opportunity to get up and tell people that this is that Jesus. Yes, this is the one that you rejected. Uh, this is the one that, that uh, when Pilate was going to release him, uh, you wanted to, to, to bind him up. 
when Pilate was going to let him go, uh, you wanted Barabbas to be let go instead. Peter went right down the line to them. Uh, and as a result, many people repented of their sins uh, and came to Jesus. Uh, well, I want you to know when the power of God operates, uh, we need to take the platform uh, and tell people about Jesus. Uh, not what I have, uh, not my how many, not about how many cars I drive, about how large my house is, but about Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost. Because the power of the Holy Ghost sets men free. The power of the Holy Ghost can make the lame to walk and make the uh, make the uh, make the dumb speak and make the deaf hear. The power of God can do things for the spirit, the soul, and the body. Why? Because it is real, and we need to let people know. And when God gives us the foundation to tell people uh, about what we have, about what's going on, uh, we should take that opportunity uh, and let them know that this is Jesus. Uh, this is Jesus. Uh, yes, that's the one you crucified, but he's resurrected from the dead. Uh, yes, uh, that's the one you killed. That's the one that, that you planted a crown of thorns and placed in his head. Yes, uh, that's the one that you pierced in the side. Uh, yes, that's the one you crucified, but he's alive and he's well. We need to let the world know that Jesus is alive and he's well. And don't you know he will show up and he will prove to the world that he's alive and he's well. Well, I want you to know that I love him with all my heart. I want you to love him with all our heart. Why? Because he is real. I want you to also know you, if you'd like to contact me for any reason. Uh, you can write me uh, uh, at, at my ministry, the words of Chester. Work with Chester Ministry, the uh, Professional Truckers Association, uh, or anywhere on the web you can find me. All you got to do is Google my name. And it will bring me up, uh, and you can find me. But write me at P.O. Box, uh, uh, P.O. Box 200603, uh, San Antonio, Texas. 78220. You can also contact me at my website, www.poemsbychester.com. Well, my dears, I'll tell you what we're looking for now. We're looking for a building uh, that's going to accommodate the Professional Truckers Association Church. Uh, and not only a building that's going to accommodate our church, but yet that's going to have enough parking space for uh, for big rigs to come and park there and come in and enjoy our services. If they're in town on Sunday morning, if they're in the San Antonio area or wherever we uh, purchase this building, uh, uh, wherever we are, if they're in that city, they can drive in and park that big rig, come in and worship God with us, and God will bless them. Uh, not only the truck drivers of America, but we're reaching out to whatever community that we're in. Uh, we're trying to win souls for Christ, and it doesn't matter uh, what title you wear. You can be a doctor if you please. Uh, uh, you can have a PhD. That's great. Yeah. Come on to the service of the Lord. Uh, you can be a truck driver. Uh, come on to the service of the Lord. Uh, you can be a nurse. Come on to the to the service of the Lord. Uh, whatever you are, you can be a lawyer. Uh, come on to the service of the Lord. Uh, whoever you are, you can be a wash disher, bus boy. It doesn't matter. Come on to the service of the Lord, uh, and God will bless you. Uh, God will keep you. Uh, again, I want you to know that I love you, my friends. Uh, I love you with the love of the Lord. Uh, God bless you.